What's going on, everybody? Uh, we're back at it again. Currently on the way to the gym right now. We are, and that was my water bottle if you heard it falling. It's in the back seat. Uh, we're currently on our way to Iron Sports. Um, today, we're going to be doing some ninja obstacles. It's the plan, as well as my grip workout that I usually like to do twice a week. Um, it's a workout that we basically at Iron Sports call Timber Climb. Um, it's basically the best way I can describe it is a huge ladder type deal that has a auto belay at the top and the whole goal is you do different grips as you climb up and come down um, the ladder I should say it's kind of more of an obstacle is the best way I can describe it um, but I'm planning to do some obstacle work beforehand just to get some more technical aspects to my um, ninja training back in um, I think that's the one thing I'm kind of lacking again is just overall flow and that makes a huge difference when it comes competition time so right now I'm kind of looking at competing in two different um, competitions coming up one is going to be a WNL comp and WNL stands for the World Ninja League and that is the um, league that I placed uh, third in the world in for the amateur division two years ago. And I have been wanting to go back ever since. I wasn't able to go last year. Um, and I'm looking forward to potentially getting back into the, the top scene. But I have a lot of work to do, if that is the case. Um, and this is a good first start. So having a great flow and being able to link certain obstacles together and um, move down transition times between obstacles is one of the best ways that you can implement that flow and kind of get into a rhythm. And for me, since I am so much of a stronger build rather than overall flow, I need to work some of my weaknesses in that way. So a lot of that is actual just technical skills on obstacles in order to kind of um, set myself up for success. So um, that's the plan today. I don't know exactly what all obstacles are set up, but we're gonna find some things that are gonna be a little bit more technical to, to put together, or if it's just working, throwing huge laches to get that type of technical experience back, that's kind of the plan. Um, I have a rip on my thumb still that hasn't fully healed, but I think we'll be okay and yeah we'll go from there so currently on my way to the gym probably take 20 25 minutes to get there and uh, we'll get after it so i'll see you there welcome to the top of iron sports so there are a thousand nah millions i would say of different lines and things that you can do in this gym um it's pretty cool to see all the different things that you can create obstacle wise in here as well as just courses in general um, but the first thing we got to do is warm up because it's kind of cold in here and I don't want to hurt any of my tendons within my fingers so usually what I do is I do some simple basic lines first which I'll show and then um, kind of get my fingers warmed up and then we're going to do some uh, technical obstacles some very there's a new one up that I want to do that's pretty hard over here as well as I'm going to work on connecting um, some big laches and see how that feels and then um, maybe do a kind of a pumpy line at some point and then we'll probably do our grip workout and go from there that's kind of the the plan but we're gonna do some easy rings first and just see how everything feels especially while wearing a microphone at the same time you know just kind of a first for everything so but it's nice and quiet. There's no parties going on at the moment. It's just nice to chill. Simple enough. All right, so now I'm gonna show why it's very imperative to get your fingers warmed up for this sport because some of these ledges are insanely small, as you can see. So we need to get our fingers nice and warm. And the reason being is we really don't want to strain any of those pulleys or things within our fingers, and it's really easy to do that 
Um, some people try and rush too quick when it comes to trying to strengthen these, and it takes, I would say, a good foundation of a year from what I've heard from people who have doing this, been doing this for a long time and rock climbers and such, that you just need to get a good basis of foundation strength within your pulleys, and then you can work on strengthening them even much more so using like a hangboard and so on and so forth. I've actually strained a pulley before, and it's like the worst experience ever of trying to let it heal correctly and do you know, little things, but we're gonna do a little bit of warm-ups for that, and then we're gonna throw some big obstacles, and it's gonna be sick. Usually I like to come in here and I'll do like some um, shoulder shrugs and do some pull-ups and just kind of hang for a minute and let the fingers get nice and warm so that they can feel the load of what I'm getting ready to do with it, so. But a lot of people have a hard time pulling through their pinkies, and you'll see a lot of people wind up hanging by three fingers, but it's very imperative that we get all of our fingers nice and strong to be able to take on some of that load. And you'll see when people start to really get fatigued when they're doing cliffhanger lines and stuff, that that pinky is always just popping off. So the way I kind of train to make that pinky nice and strong too is what I'll do is uh, hangboard workouts, but I'll hang just from these back three fingers that way I can start to learn how to pull through this pinky and uh, give myself some extra room for when I start to get tired. So here's our first tough obstacle. These basically just straight up doorknobs. And you're gonna swing from both of these and catch the next pair and so on and so forth. But they're pretty slick and it looks very challenging. It's like a precision type grab. And I really do need to work that because I feel like I've lost a little bit of my hand-eye coordination when it comes to the sport just because uh, I haven't done it for a little bit. And it's kind of interesting how technical the sport has become with um, there's like a battering obstacle, these other things. So pretty interesting. But let's see. This is attempt number one. And you're about to see this sport it seems like 80% of the time you fail until you get it like two or three times in a row. What ends up happening half the time is you don't film the first time <laughs> and then you fail like three or four times in a row again and then finally get it on video. So kind of with a, a lot of sports but I'm afraid that this one might take me a few tries to get and I'm, a, I'm trying to figure out how I want to hold them. Probably this way seems to be the best way. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> first try is always a good one. <laughs> uh, I was not expecting that. Yeah, you definitely have to grab them. I would say sideways. I don't know if you can get away with it in this way, but maybe I'll try both just to see what it feels like. Attempt one with hands facing forward this way. I don't think this one's gonna be nearly as easy. This seems a little bit difficult to try and swing from. Oh yeah, no. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, I would never do that obstacle that way. <laughs> Screw that. <laughs> that's pretty brutal. Okay, this one, I know for a fact I'm not gonna get first try. Um, this part isn't bad but there is a pipe on top of this one that it spins. So you need to grab a mix grip. That's not the hard part. The hard part is you need to float up and catch these cliffhangers. And because it's separated and it's on straps, it makes it 10 times harder. I tried this in class a couple nights ago and I didn't get it, but I was very close. It's just very particular in the way you need to grab it because you kind of have to float into it rather than going at it directly. Because if you go at it directly, you're gonna push the things away from you and it's gonna be, you're not gonna grab the cliffhanger. You have to come down on top of it so you give yourself time to be able to grab the ledges. But it's gonna take me a few tries. So it might be kind of funny because I'll just film like, I don't know, 20 tries of me failing and either I'm gonna get it or I'm not. So we'll see. Let's put together a montage now. Oh, okay. Oh. Come on, baby. 
Oh! Oh! Yes! Yes! Finally! Oh, that was perfect. That was exactly what I needed to do. I floated straight into it, and I didn't hit the circles that time. I was able to land perfectly on it, and I got my pinky on. I'm telling you, huge difference. So, we did the doorknobs, which is kind of a techie obstacle, the cliffhangers, which is a strength, and I would say technical, because you have to be put in a better position in order to catch it. And now we're really gonna work on being able to throw laches back and forth and link um, is kind of the next thing. So the way these bars are set up, they're sectioned out by feet. So you're able to move them back and forth to figure out um, how far you can throw a lache. And a lache just basically means a swing from bar to bar. So right now they're set up at 10 feet apart. Um, I've done links before going back and forth at nine, I don't know if I've ever done 10 before. So we'll see how this goes, but so. Basis of throwing a lache back and forth is you need to catch in what we call a speed lache, where your hips are behind your hands. So that way you're able to turn around, flip, throw the same way and go back and forth. Um, because if you catch with your hips being underneath your hands, you're not able to necessarily just throw straight out of the next lache. It'll be easier for me to demonstrate rather than just talk about it. So let's see how this goes. Whew. Oh my goodness. Whew. Okay, that wasn't bad. So as you can see, what I had to do was I had to catch with my arms extended in order to be able to flip my hips around in the back of my swing to be able to turn around and throw immediately back. Now on that last one, I caught a little bit too far with my hips underneath, and that's kind of what led me to kind of drag my feet initially right off the bat. Okay, so we got that pretty easily. I wasn't expecting to be able to get it back and forth that easily, but now I'm gonna try and do four in a row, and I think that's gonna be a good way to tell if I can keep setting myself up in a good position. Um, what I ended up doing too was I took a smaller mat and I put it under this one. That way I don't drag my feet. Since I'm a little bit of a taller dude, it kind of gets in the way sometimes when the mats are a little bit higher. And so sometimes you can't help but hit your feet on the mat and it's kind of annoying. But we're gonna see how this goes. Also, chalk is your best friend in this sport. Very vital. That way we can get the moisture off of our hands and not slip on something stupid. Okay, four in a row. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, baby! Woo! Okay, that felt so sick, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I have really practiced that in a super long time. So to be able to throw 10 feet like that back and forth is pretty fun. I've seen my friend Jonathan, shout out my boy, Jonathan Murphy. This dude linked 13 feet back and forth. That is mind boggling. The farthest lache I've ever done was 14 feet. So I can't even imagine that, but a good goal nonetheless to to do, but I think that's gonna wrap it up for my technical training. I may throw a, a pumpy line together here in the jungle gym off to your left. That way you can kind of see what it looks like to kind of work getting through being pumped. And then we're gonna do my grip workout for a little bit and then call it a day, so sick. Okay, so here's the plan. We're gonna do kind of linking together some of these obstacle lines behind me just to kind of work through moving things. If I say I miss a certain grab or need to uh, work on some hand-eye coordination stuff. So we're gonna start, it's kind of hard for you to probably see, but there's a cliffhanger, this red cliffhanger line. We're gonna take that all the way down. 
we're gonna go to the ring, first line, these red rings across, then take the black rings down. Then we're gonna take from there to these, what we call nunchucks, the two metal hanging pipes. Swing through that line, then move to these red, what we call paper clips. Finish on that line, huge dismount, land on the black, call it good there. So should be not too bad. Um, I don't see any pro thing that I am kind of nervous about when it comes to not being able to do it, but you never know until you hop on an obstacle how it exactly feels that, you know, whether it's okay or not. Got it, map it out, make some big moves here, hop through. Myself up. Nice big reach. Easy rings. Kind of set myself up here. I missed. I missed again. It's fine. See what I mean? You never know. I didn't really set myself up for success there, but it's also interesting talking through this. I wonder if it's going to be an advantageous thing for me eventually, or it's going to be a lot harder. Oh, I should have told me thrown out of that. Oh, that ring. <laughs> uh, okay, that was kind of funny. I just got totally blocked by that ring when I went to throw out of it. Oh my gosh, I was not expecting that. Oh well, we'll do it again. Okay. All right, I'm gonna try and make sure to not have that ring going back and forth in between and block my hand this time, but I was feeling pretty good in between. Um, maybe kind of clean it up a little bit. I spent a little bit too long linking these uh, red to black bling. <laughs> red to black rings um try and get get moving quick get in on get on and get off because i want to try and save as much energy as i can especially if i'm thinking in a competition i want to make this as efficient as possible get on save as much energy as i need move on to what's next so hence why we do the hopping for the cliffhanger Use the wingspan to an advantage. Set myself up here. Much smoother. Whew. Okay. Make sure. Yes. <laughs> Did that on purpose. That way it's not swinging away from me. Good setup. Not a good setup there. save on the paper clip. Let me catch my breath for a minute. I did not expect to be a little bit pumped towards the end there, but I was. That's okay. We beat it. That's all that matters. So as I was saying, we're going to be do a, doing our grip workout now. And this is what is known as timber climb. As you can see, there's a lot of different holds that are on the timber climb that we can do different grip variations and stuff. So that's part of it. And then from there, you'll see a wall with some holds on it that looks super small as it goes down the length of the wall. We're gonna be doing that back and forth as well as one more thing, which I will show you how small the ledges are. But the whole goal 
of this workout is basically what we want to do is we want to work through being pumped and being able to form that mindset of telling myself, I have more in the tank, I have more in the tank, I have more in the tank, even when your body is saying you don't have anything left. Even if that means taking a second to shake out each hand and then going back at it. Um, what I like to do is I like to do a round base where I'll do my whole entire uh, movement through and then I'll give myself like two minutes of rest. That way I have enough left in the tank to do another round, but I'm also still kind of pumped going into the next one. So I can prove to myself already at that point, dang, I know I can hit it again. I can no, go nearly as hard as the last round. So it's a very brutal grip technique that we use in order to simulate that, but its benefits are insane. Um, I give credit to this workout for me placing probably top three two years ago. And uh, it really helped me form that mindset when I was on the stage two at the WNL. Uh, world championship that I still had more left in the tank even when my body was telling me I didn't and I was already forming that mindset that I know I can go farther so it's gonna be a good little uh, grip workout we're probably gonna do like three or four rounds and then I like to do what's called a prove it round at the very end where all I do is like hang from a bar or some pegs or something like that and prove to myself that even when I'm completely destroyed again that I still got something left in the tank so we'll see how it goes as you can see, I'm belayed in so that if I do fall, I'm getting caught. And I'm not trying to move extremely fast. I'm just trying to move efficiently. That way I can just be smooth, work through it. So this is like a cliffhanger grip. And obviously kind of offloaded, just straight upper body strength being able to use my legs but that allows me to go even harder so it's always a good thing Whew. and now going claw grips And this is the last piece. So as you can see, this ledge is insanely tiny. Remember I was saying I worked these back three fingers. So we're gonna do five, pull it to the chest, come back down with all of our fingers on here. Five, then we're gonna do back three. So now my index finger, my thumb are off. And then we're gonna do front three and have the pinkies off and the thumb. This part normally gets me pretty pumped. All right. All right, I held true to my promise. I'm doing my first set I did already. This is my last set. I decided to do five because four, yes, I was super, super pumped, but I knew, I know now I can push a little bit more and get to the edge of where I'm failing grip wise. So we're gonna push and uh, finish this out strong, but this is gonna suck. And that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to suck. If you're not finding the edge of where you're at physically during training, you'll never reach to where you wanna go competition wise. 
to live by that. That's the only way that I was able to get where I am now. And I'll continue to do so until I am done with this sport. No excuses, baby. You get after it. Come on, last round, come on. Everything you got. Holy pump. Oh my gosh. That was brutal. All right, like I said, now is a prove it round. I am completely pumped. I can barely open and close my forearm or my hand at this point, but I'm just gonna dead hang, which is basically just hanging from the bar for as long as I possibly can. Um, this is kind of just to instill that mindset that even though I'm completely pumped, like I said, just to keep getting after it, so. We'll see how long we can get. And to focus on breathing. Keep that under control. on anything anymore oh as you can see my hands can't even like open and close at this point Woo! so finished up all of our ninja training our grip training and now it's kind of time to take care of the body so first let's uh oh i still have this on that's okay let me take this off real quick usually i get super pumped in my forearms but i always always get a uh, pretty good uh, back pump too and usually I like to see that because that's I would say where most of my muscle is from doing this sport at this point however the one piece that I really want to get is I really want to get some strong legs I do have decently strong legs but not nearly for as what I want but let's see oh pumped out we are whoo Oh, I would say I'm pretty pumped. 
Normally I know I'm, I'm pretty pumped when I literally can't touch my shoulders with my hands, <laughs> which I definitely can't do at this point. But you may be asking like, what the heck do you do for your body to kind of help you out at this point after doing a workout like that? I just need to stretch, kind of get some of this loosened up because tendency is, especially in ninja stuff, we're always grabbing this way. Don't, we don't really extend. And so I have a couple little trainers and things to help me work on extensors so that way I don't have an imbalance between my flexors and my extenders. But usually I just like to come in here and kind of stretch out for a minute, kind of let the forearms start to depump. But as you can see, I can't really get over my hands anymore because they're so tight. But, you know, we'll just take a second and kind of rock back and forth, take it nice and slow, kind of relax for a minute, bring the heart rate down. That was a really good workout and able to, to push myself to another level, which I was really happy about. But, whew, I am still so pumped, man. I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but good Lord. All right, did my little cool down. I'm gonna get ready to drive home, eat some dinner, and then I gotta drive up to Austin tonight to uh, uh, take my brother to the airport tomorrow morning. But um, overall, fantastic workout. Uh, that might have been one of my favorite training sessions in a long time. Um, doing the ninja obstacles and then the grip training at the end is always my favorite. Um, I was really honestly happy about linking the 10 foot laches. They felt so clean. And I'm sure when I watch them back uh, afterwards, they're gonna be so sick to watch. Um, it's so funny because I'm so I'm a taller ninja. Everything looks uh, not nearly as big, but when you do it in person, it feels massive still. So it's, sometimes it's a little underwhelming on camera, but oh well. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, kind of like a behind the scenes of what ninja training is kind of like. Everyone has their own little forte. Um, sometimes for me I'm running choruses but normally that's during like team classes and stuff um, that way I can you know shoot some ideas with uh, my other classmates and my training partners is kind of the way I like to do it instead of just doing it myself um, but yeah man this was a fun video if you really enjoyed liking and seeing all of the the stuff that we did today um, give this video a like and uh, Leave a comment if you enjoyed it and want to see more of this type of stuff. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I appreciate everybody that gave me happy birthday wishes and everything that um, after the last video, I wasn't experiencing or expecting that much love off of the first video. But to everybody who came and supported, I really appreciate every single one of y'all. Um, I'm praying for each and every single one of y'all as we move into this new year. I'm excited for all of the things that are going to happen in 2024 and ready to uh, continue to get after it as an athlete, as a, as a person, um, as a believer, everything in between, man. So, um, like I say, pray for your families, pray for your friends, pray for everyone because frankly, everybody needs it. Tell somebody you love them. You guys are the best. And until next time, deuces.